Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog, to my channel and on the bench today we've got the uh, the NAM or the NAM NAP 140 but this time rather than having the Sanken transistors on there for the output I've put in a couple of these Toshibas okay now these are genuine Toshibas from Farnell and um, I've also um, had to get rid of those two power supplies that I had and the reason why I had to do that was because I noticed that they introduced some noise and let me just show you on the screen quick what I mean by that and here is this little um, num nap output on the screen here and this is with the Toshiba chips, I do believe, but it doesn't really matter which one it is. I think it's the Toshiba chips, uh, but this is the Rigel output, okay? And I should have probably showed you the way around first. And that's, all I did was just move those um, power leads up to the Tenman, or I'm showing you the video in reverse, so I did it first in the Tenman, and that's the output that we got and i thought oh no this um this amplifier is terrible i mean look at it dude and that's no good and just moving those power leads um popping them into the rigel uh there like i say then we get this output uh, i lowered the volume first before i uh just connected it up and that's the output that's just the difference there so because there was that amount of difference, I just thought, nah. I did faff around with the power supplies, had a little look around, see what I could do, and then I just thought, no, you know, just death them. While I can still send them back, send them back. So I've sent them back. All right, so we get that out of the way. Um, now, I've decided to just connect up this Digilink again. I'm using the differential input on it. And just to see what this is like here, because the nice thing about this and using this audio analyzer suite software is there's uh, we can do THD noise versus the frequency across the entire frequency. I can't figure out how I can do that yet with Arta, but just to give a bit of a look, we can look at this um, frequency response here and see what this is like. Now, this is 20k, I believe that's 30k, so this is 20k, um, 20 kilohertz. And it doesn't look too bad at all. And if we just compare that with what we get with Arta, the only difference is here is we have a lower noise floor generally within the system. It's 32 bit system. Um, and we've got a uh, 14 bit oscilloscope doing this. But we get to see anyway. Uh, this does actually match really what you get on the output, especially when you look at it in Arta. Um, look at the now I've done all this already to save time all right so I just thought this would be the better way and you can see look at the noise floor I've put some averages on that uh, so you can see and it's that fundamental going in and there's the 2k harmonic 3 4 5 6 7 and this is pretty much um, it's quite similar apart from we get to see a lot more of this in Arta because uh, we get to you know we're a lot lower in actual fact we're down here somewhere and 120 um, so you only get to see these bits mainly uh, but, but still it's, it's good because it doesn't have to be all about what it shows here on this we got the spectrum analyzer and Arta so let's have a look at this now this is always interesting because this is the THD and the noise across the entire frequency from 20 Hertz uh, all the way up to 20k so if we take a look at here at the peaks you can see up here these numbers here is there is the frequency that we're at and this is the um, total harmonic distortion plus the noise so we can look and we look at the peaky parts we see that's um, 0 0.07 again 0 0.07 we've got quite a few numbers after this as well which is uh, pretty good for resolution 0 0.07 this is uh, 0 0.08 I'm looking at the peaky parts 0 0.08 0 0.08 
0 0.07, 0 0.08, and there it goes up a little bit, uh, the, the top end of the frequency, but we can also see a little bit of that with the spectrum, no, not the spectrum analog, it's with the frequency response, where it goes up a little bit here, and even though that doesn't quite tie into there, but if we drop out onto the THD now, look, THD uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0.04, 0.08, and we got about yeah, uh, 0 0.1114, that's at 17k. So it still looks you know, pretty good with the Toshibas, but I'm not saying that that's not going to look as well with the Sankens because what you got to remember is when I did this, I was using then 10 mud power supplies, not the Rigel. I've been using the Rigel just to test the circuit, knowing everything's okay. I've built it okay, and then I switch over to the 10 mud. Uh, you know, it was like having a punch in the stomach when I realized what I'd done, what, what, what that was doing. I had to actually phone a friend and just have a chat. <laughs> because these things <laughs> knock me about a little bit when it, when I get to see something like that. So I've already done this just to speed things up again. Or well, we can see uh, this is with the, the voltage that we got going in 32 volts per side. So I can't really expect it to be uh, the same as what it would be if it were um, at 40 volts which is what they, they sort of recommend, but I am going to get this fixed, meaning that I'm going to be getting another power supply very soon, at the same as the Rigel. So there we got about 50 watts out of it before we get to 1%, which is okay, that's at 8 ohms. We'll do a test in a moment for 4 ohms. Mm, we can do that now, actually. Let me just see if it's going to be easy enough. All I've got to do... On this to here to here. I'm just going to turn the power off very quickly while I do this. It just basically connects up that to there. Well, I don't know if you can see that. Let's just back that off. And then I can connect up this to here. And we have now got a 4 ohm load. Right, nothing else has to change. That's good. I'm going to turn the power back on there. It's still recording. I'll turn it off. No, 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 that's good. All right, and we can just do this again with a 4 ohm load. So we're setting the range from 1 watt to 100 watts. Uh, we're going to switch out this load here to 4 ohms, not 40. We'll put the zero there. 4.0. In actual fact, I'll, uh, I'll show you in a different video in a short what happens when you do something wrong in this. And I think it was in here I did it wrong. <laughs> and I'll show you what happens when you do that. All right, so 50 steps. Um, there's gonna be nothing to do. We're going to stop at 1% again because I'm not interested in anything after 1%. So let's hit it. And I think I'll point you towards the power supply here as well, up in the corner. Okay. Well, I didn't actually get to see what the power supply did then. I was too busy watching the screen to see what it was going to do. Well, this is interesting because this happened a bit in the other one, didn't it? It sort of went up a little bit. And, yeah, I can't remember now whether and what part of the video it was that... Because uh, I've done this so many times that I lose a bit of track. Uh, where it was actually going on a higher distortion level and then as I pushed it even more power to the minus 3 dB the distortion level went down. I don't know if this has anything to do with that but that's a bit strange because it was the same as before and that's at 51 watts, like that's where it went, it goes up 51 watts and it comes down again a bit. 
Um, we get to get uh, what 72 watts out of that. Yeah, I mean that's not bad I suppose. It's not as though it was pulling too much current. I didn't notice but I'd very much doubt it would have been. But you remember you can run this at minus, uh, plus minus 40 volts. Um, we just got it at 32. All right, so we looked at the frequency response. Oh, a quick look at the scope. I'm not gonna go through all the different bits on the scope. I'm just gonna go from a low middle to high. We've already done it here, 20 hertz. That looks pretty respectable. You're gonna expect a little bit of drop off. This is an old, old circuit. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty good when you, uh, consider uh, the circuit. Let's go to a thousand. Oh, I don't know what I've put in there. Some sort of special character and we'll just hit that on a single. Yeah, it's all right. Let's roll a bit. We've got a bit of noise on there, but that's probably just this setup. Uh, now we're going to go to 10k. Hit that. Mm. This is the uh, treble, and, uh, and the, well, it's the speed of it as well. But still, not too bad, really. And uh, we'll get a twenty. I'm not bothering anything after twenty. Mm. Not brilliant, but not terribly bad. And I think it shows a little bit in the frequency response that as well. Uh, the way that's. You know, we're about uh, what 15k there, yeah, where it starts dropping off. And to be honest, if you can, can you hear anything above 15k particularly? Uh, that's one of the two. Oh, there's a 20. So that's a minus 0.2 dB against the reference signal going in. So it's pretty good. All right, let's um, let's set up for Arta and check that out. So Arta's set up here now. Uh, the only difference is that. I've disconnected this thing. I decided that this is probably introducing noise as well. You know, there's a lot of space between things. And those components I use are all cheap ones from China. These components on here, they're all V-shaped. The two resistors are V-shaped and the two Zener diodes are V-shaped. And it's a lot smaller. So, you know, hopefully that's, uh, well, I actually know it does make a difference. So that's the way that is now, but apart from that, everything else is the same. And uh, let's have a little peek. So, put on a, well, just turn the volume down. I don't want it just kicking in full blast. I want me to set this. Da, 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 da. One too many, and we're going to go up the range there. So we're down here 160. And as you can see, look, the noise floor on the other one was here. The power's on, on the power supply. That was at 50 hertz, and we got some common mode in here. Nothing too spectacular, though. So while that's on, let's start turning it up. This is what you could see in the frequency response. Look. This is uh, a noise coming in here. Now, the interesting thing is, when you see this, of course, you've got less of a signal to the noise, so we get this point zero 0.05, point zero 0.06. As we start going up and turning the signal up, and the signal becomes you know, a lot higher compared to the noise, about 14 dBF uh, minus 14. 0 0.15 which is you know, pretty good uh, we get to 10 and there is something noticeable in a minute you'll see that uh, but this is all quite nice you know this is our second uh, uh, even harmonic odd even odd even odd even and you can see that a little bit where you couldn't see these um, so much in the other spectrum analyzer you can see the top bits more but look what happens here, look, we're at 0.012% at 8 dB FS, and watch this. Yeah, at 6, at 9.017, and we just get a little bit close, we've gone in 0.025, and as soon as I go down there to that, we're at 0.1%, 0.2%, uh, 0.1%. And this 
look the noise level the noise floor has gone up uh, let me just take the pressure off the system the uh, noise floor has gone up and we've got all these little um, spares coming around each side of our harmonic stand uh, this is all push but th th this is you're pushing it to full volume you're pushing it to full volume. I mean, look at the input level here, 60. So you're pushing it to full volume. You just knock it off just a little tiny bit. And uh, that noise floor drops down. And we're back into uh, 0.025. And, you know, we've only missed out on a little bit. That is quite a bit of power, really. But we're using that um, 0.934 amp. So yeah, I'd say that's, uh, that's okay. That's okay, and let's have a look at the um, frequency response here. I know that we've just looked at it on that, but it's always nice to look at it on this as it's, you know, it's a higher bit uh, system. So I would just uh, kick that in. Oh, there it is, it's right at the top, I can see it. Is it going to let me move it? No. Clickety, clickety, click. Now that still looks a little bit, but look how zoomed in we are. So I'm going to just knock this down very, very slightly. Oh, in actual fact, I'm going to put it up. I think it's about 59 it works on best. Oh, 57. This is really dodgy trying to get this down here. Okay. I'll put that there. All right, and then uh, hopefully it's going to let me bring this down. Uh, we'll bring this range up. We want it to be 3.5. 1.5, 2.53, bring that back up again to 3. So there we have it, just like we would have seen it on the other one with uh, plus minus 3 uh, dB scale. And it doesn't look too bad at all, does it? Uh, this is uh, 20 hertz. And if we just put this across here and put that across there, we get to see. Oh, I'm going to get it onto that one as it drops onto the one. That's 10 hertz. And that's like point five, well, yeah, uh, 0.5. But at 20, we're talking um, 0 0.1 dB. And across here, this is where it drops off on the analyzed side here. And we're at 20K pretty much, 0 0.21 dB. It's not even a half dB. Um, around that 15, 0 0.06. If we look at uh, what we are on the 1K, just to get a bit of reference, uh, plus 0 0.05 dB. So yeah, that, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, much better looking than what it was, uh, but partial of that is down to, like I showed you before, because that was the this setup, but using the Tenma power supply and then swapping out into the Rigel and the you know the, the the difference the contrast there was automatic with me it was like oh my life look at this get rid of the other one get rid of those power supplies uh they're one millivolt apparently um rms ripple and noise on the output but the Rigel here is 350 microvolts around about 0.3 of a millivolt Oh, it's RMS. Right, so that's that with the Toshiba chips, and I will actually redo this. I'm not going to do it this week. Uh, I've got some else I want to show you, but um, that's what it's like with the Toshiba ones. Oh, and let me just tell you, I've already done this. I know what this looks like now, and um, yeah, the, 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 I can't say it now that you know this is a complete flop because it's not. Thanks for watching. If you got this far. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now, guys.